Hello everybody, my name is Peter. This video is brought to you by Squarespace and here we're going to be looking at this pen and these two brass nuts. Now, as you can see, the brass nut fits perfectly onto the pen and that's very satisfying. The pen is very precisely machined with this cross-threaded texture and uh, the nut is not too loose, not too tight on there. It just goes along very nicely. So one thing you can do is just let the nut fall up and down the pen. That's one fun way to play with it, right? It's a great fidget toy. Excellent. Or you can hold onto the nut and let the pen go up and down. Endless fun. But there's two nuts, so how can we use both of these? Now I've sat in front of the TV doing this for quite a while now. If you hold on to one nut between each finger, you can move them away from the ch each other and then back towards each other. The pen stays motionless, just spins in place, and it's very hypnotizing and satisfying to do. I don't know if this is satisfying for all of you, but here in person, it's wonderful. Of course, you can also use this pen as a pen. If you twist this part in, the ballpoint tip comes poking out the end. Or if you twist it out all the way, this is when you can uh, refill it. This is also just a solid piece of machined aluminum right here, as you can see. Then here's the refill, which I'm not sure what kind of refill it is. It probably tells on their, uh, I think their Kickstarter just finished and then they're on Indiegogo now. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check them out. Anyways, even that part is satisfying. Look at that big threaded thing. Wow. It's hollow in the end. Pop, pop it right in there. Tighten it down. And it also comes in a heavier brass version. Personally, I've been playing with the aluminum version myself because, uh, I don't know, maybe the contrast between the silver and the br golden colors. or I don't know. The brass one is just maybe... Maybe three times as heavy. I'm not sure. I haven't, haven't weighed them. The brass one functions just the same, if not better, just because it's a little bit heavier, but the aluminum has no problems. Look at that. Zip. Zip. Very satisfying. And then you can also do the wonderful, put them right in the middle there, then go like this. Oh, oh, that's so nice. Whoever thought of that was great. But here's my problem, okay? I like these as fidget toys, or I like playing with them, but when it comes to actually writing with them, it's just a very standard ballpoint pen fill or gel pen fill rollerball. The point is, like the title suggests, I kind of wish these weren't a pen. The fidget part of it, the, the part of it here where I can slide the nuts around on this double threaded highly precision machined cylinder uh, is only taken away by the pen features like this little thing here and this little thing here. I kind of wish now that it was just a more dedicated fidget toy. And at the same time, the penness of it, you know, if you try writing with it, maybe it's not too heavy. It's kind of heavy, but not too heavy. It's definitely annoying to try writing on it if you have these nuts on there because they definitely get in the way. So you can't write on it while you have the nuts on there. They're always coming down trying to get in your hand. So you have to put the nuts aside while you're writing, in my opinion. They write good. Take the nuts off. Twist it a lot to put, make the tip come out. Write with it. And this part does a little bit start to hurt your fingers. What I'm trying to say is that both the pen functions and the fidget toy functions impede on each other a little bit and um, make each other worse. Um, let me try to make a parallel to something we've all experienced before that we can all relate to. Limousine shopping. All right, we're out there. We see a gold-plated Hummer limousine that we want. And, but we're just not sure. We haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. But then we notice... It has a swimming pool in the back, right? And that puts us over the edge. And so we buy it because of the swimming pool. But then after going around the limousine for a little while, we realize that having the swimming pool in the back really makes both the limousine experience 
and the swimming pool experience a little bit worse than if they'd been separate. The, the limousine by itself without a swimming pool is better, and a swimming pool by swimming pool by itself without the limousine is a little bit better. I think we can all agree, right? I think the same thing happens here. A pen without the nuts and the sharp cross threading is a little bit better. And then the sharp cross threading and, and the nuts would be better without trying to add the pen features. But I understand why it's difficult to do that because personally, I don't think I would ever convince myself uh, to buy just a rod of metal with cross threading and nuts. It's because it was also a pen which is why I might ever buy it. These were sent to me for free, let me be clear, but I can understand why that's not like a marketable thing. Hey, buy this inanimate metal rod, right? A pen has a little bit more life to it, a little bit more marketable, just like slapping a swimming pool on the back of a limousine. They might not sell many swimming pools otherwise. Hope that made sense. Anyways. I will use this to draw our little square doodle for today, but after that, I might think about some other options. Now here's our square doodle, and it's important to remember that if you're selling products, whether in person or online, if you've been drumming up some business, Squarespace automatically keeps your inventory and sales data in sync with your online store, so you never lose track of all that stuff. If you get to the point where you have more than a couple pending orders at a time that you haven't shipped out yet or you're still working on them, or you just wanna make sure you don't sell one thing more than once, it's nice to have a system like this. Plus Squarespace has great portfolios and gallery options with automatic image scaling, adjust the settings on the different galleries with this wonderful feature I love called drag and drop. All right, it's very intuitive. Try out some different templates, see what suits your style, and then customize it a little bit. Fill it up with all the things about you and what you're doing. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash peterdraws for 10% off your first website or domain. It is very cool. I love these. I'm definitely going to keep them around. Definitely going to keep this part twisted out because I'm always afraid that I'm as I'm playing with it, I drop, I end up, see the problem is I do this thing where I go like this and it, the pen is going in and out of the nut and I end up dropping a lot like on my couch and stuff. I'm always terrified that I've twisted this out and the ballpoint pen is going to write ink on my, on me or my, I, I probably should just take this completely out and take, maybe be a, I can just turn it into the fidget tool I want. See, now it's just a metal rod. There we go. I fixed it. Anyways, they send these for to me for free and I feel bad because obviously they're trying to uh, advertise their um, Kickstarter, which finished, or they're trying to ever, go buy their pen if you think you like it. Okay, thanks for sending these to me. Um, but I stand by my judgment that they'd be. You know, I, I can't. I can't hide my true opinions. <laughs> Obviously, I feel a little bit bad because I do often say I like pens because they have like features of, of, about them that you can fidget with and stuff like that. But these, the fidgeting takes over the penness of it, and. Uh, ruins a little bit, but they're definitely very fun to play with. Even if you never write a line with them, I think that feature is definitely, the fidget feature is definitely much stronger than the pen features. All right, hello everyone. I'm going to sneak in right here down in the bottom left-hand corner, I think, where I won't be too intrusive. I'm gonna hit you with a little bit of face cam here today. And this video really has two distinct sections, two distinct phases where in the first section, I was discussing that pen and my likes, my dislikes. Ultimately, I decided that even while I was drawing that sponsored doodle, um, it's not that great to draw with because the smooth part at the tip is too smooth and the sharp cross-threaded part is too sharp. And so here I am drawing with other pens. Hope you don't mind. This is just some random scratch, scratch, scratch book, sketchbook that I grabbed and I will say, uh, I think this drawing is maybe more than usual influenced by the things I was listening to while drawing. Sometimes it happens and it's noticeable. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Or actually, maybe sometimes it does happen and it's not noticeable. I just don't realize it. But this time it happened and it felt noticeable. I was listening to the Dune audiobook. Uh, in anticipation of the new Dune movie that's coming out. Um, when you're watching this, 
video, it might, I mean, it's coming out on like October 22nd, so depending on when you're watching this, it might have already come out, and then we'll see how good the movie was. But, uh, basically, the audiobook is pretty good, the one I was listening to, anyways, there's probably many different audiobook recordings of it. There are different voice actors for the different characters, at least a few different ones, I don't know, there's probably some people that do multiple voices, right, that's probably good. Um, which was enjoyable, not necessary. I think it's totally fine. I think it's interesting that an audiobook is almost just as enjoyable when there's one person doing all the voices as when there's a bunch of different voice actors. What I didn't like as much is how sometimes they added like sound effects and, and music and little ambient drones and stuff, like especially during moments that maybe were supposed to be tense or suspenseful, they added tense and suspenseful music, and I didn't really like that because I kind of wanted to get that feeling on my own from the words in the book, you know, I, because then they're just kind of adding too much extra stuff that was never intended by the author with um, suspenseful music and stuff like that. In my opinion, that's going a little bit too far. But apart from that, it's a good recording. Of course, I don't know which recording it was because I feel like someone will ask which it was, what it was. I found it on Audible. If I hope that helps a little bit. Anyways, um, so yeah, I, I felt like all that stuff was bouncing around in my head. Ideas of alien planets with strange technology and mining and harvesting factories and drones and strange... Uh, I don't know. Because this structure in the middle of this drawing to me looks kind of like a uh some sort of mining structure it's going down it's got pods i like pods nature has them people make them of course people are nature in my opinion i don't know some people that's a thing i've been thinking about a lot lately and i don't want to go into it too much right now the way people distinguish things as nature or not nature i don't have i don't know how some things can stop being nature how are anyways i'll anyways never mind that's for another time once I figure out all of my ideas. Um, also, I know in this video, in the earlier half of this video, I said the word nuts a lot, which I'm a little bit sorry for if that made anyone uncomfortable, but I don't know what else those things are called besides nuts. Those are called nuts, aren't they? Also, on my walk that I got back from just now, uh, before I took a shower just now, I went on a walk, came back, took a shower, and now I'm sitting here talking at you. I found two more nuts. Look at those. They're blurry. I think these are hazelnuts, maybe? I'm not sure. I think they're hazelnuts. They were falling out of a tree that I walked by a couple times, and they would have husks around them. I'm not sure, but one of them fell out of the tree right in front of me and exploded. The husk exploded away from it. It was like one foot in front of me, like the tree was almost aiming at me and narrowly missed. But they're very satisfying to carry around. And um, I was kind of like turning them around in my hand as I walked, which was very, um, I don't know what to say, except it was satisfying. I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're supposed to be eaten. What are, <gasps> wait. Hey, the only thing I can remember hazelnuts ever being used for is as a flavor of coffee creamer. What else are they popular for? I'm not sure. Anyways, I hope you're all doing well lately. Uh, lately, I personally have been uh, keeping myself pretty busy, of course, with this YouTube stuff. Uh, by the way, if you're looking for one of the Peter Penn still, they might be in stock again when I first released... You know, the announcement video where I announced the Peter Pens, they went out of stock within a few hours, which was exciting, but that was only half the stock. They only had half of them ready to ship out at that moment, so that's the only that's how many they put up. But a few days later they restocked. So if you missed that, if you were at work, if you were asleep, it's actually pretty good for you. There might be some still up there, uh, ready for you to grab because the second batch is going um just slightly slower. So see if you See if you can grab one. Uh, also, I will say, uh, I was trying to say that I'm busy with YouTube stuff and also knee, no, neck deep in school stuff right now. Uh, 
which is good. I like being busy. It's definitely sometimes when I get when I have too much time on my hands, it's a good opportunity. It's nice to have time on your hands because you can sit back and maybe figure out what you want to do with your life, right? You can it's your chance to take on big, meaningful, momentous projects, right? That chance is there when you have lots of time on your hands, but usually what happens is I just get sad and depressed and I overthink things and I don't get anything meaningful done. So it's better to stay busy. I've been enjoying school. They give me projects. I've been enjoying like working hard on those, doing them well. Uh, I'm doing um, the pro the, the program I'm in at school is called interior architecture, which I don't really know what that means. I've mentioned this before. Um, but of course, people always ask, so I'll keep reminding you because not everyone watches every video. Some of you do, though, I know, and I thank you. Um, basically, it's like a combination between architecture and interior design, I think. I'm not sure, though. Whatever it is, I'm enjoying it. It's kind of like all the drawing and stuff I've been doing for years, but applied, if that makes any sense. Like, now it has a purpose, and now I have to think about it. And I don't even know if I want to be like an architect or an interior designer or anything like that, but... Maybe I will be able to sleep at night better if I have a bachelor's degree in a couple of years. I don't know. That's just Maybe that's just my uh, worrying and overthinking part of my personality. Maybe it won't solve all my problems. Nothing I ever have done in the past has solved all my problems, so I don't know why I thought this would, but I'm having a good time with it. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, you know. So I post some of my projects and stuff when I finish them on Instagram and stuff if you watch there and maybe if I feel good enough about them. It's harder at the beginning because I'm still on only in like the second year of the program. It seems like I feel like I'm forever in this this state of, you know, doing like, well, I guess it makes sense that I'm learning in school, but it's like I want to get into like a good big project where I feel like I have a good big finished polished product at the end and maybe that's my fault that I am not turning out finished polished projects that don't look like kindergartner stuff but I'm sure we'll get there eventually no I think it is my fault and I also do feel like we're getting there I posted one thing uh no we're getting there I take it all back I do feel like we're getting there anyways see y'all later thanks for watching um yeah I don't know what else to say Go try to crack these hazelnuts open for dinner. I don't have a nutcracker anywhere around here. Maybe I'll just use a... I do have a hammer, but I'll try to keep my fingers out of the way. That's the most important thing. Okay, bye. See you later.